Hi everyone, we're here again with What Was That About with Dr. Tony Saldano. How are you today? Candice, how are you? I'm really, really good. How's your hair? How's the, it's really hot and it gets frizzy, right? I, I, how about we talk about your hair? <laughs> Let's not talk about that, my hair. That would be a very short subject. <laughs> yeah. I would actually receive any kind of frizz in my hair, oh, to be honest. Exactly. But, well, yeah. yeah, it's all about frizz this summer. It's all so. about frizz. I wish I could frizz. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Pastor, we were talking a little bit this week, you know, and um, having some discussion just about how the devil attacks us. Um, 1 Peter 4.12 talks about, you know, when you experience trials, these fiery trials that come at you, don't think that it's a strange thing that happened to you. And we were saying that, you know, we always think that the devil attacks us in our weaknesses. But we've been seeing over, you know, and you've so seen a lot of this over the last few months, the devil has attacked you in some of your strengths and he attacks us in our strengths. Do you want to talk about that and, and just um, the difference that people are always thinking that we get attacked in our weaknesses, but it's really, you know, he comes to attack our strengths as well. Yeah, you know, the Bible, you know, that's a great point, Candace. The Bible talks about fiery trials, talks about persecution, talks about uh, temptation, right? Um, notice what uh, Paul said. He said, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. And, you know, it, it has been a bit of a revelation to me because I always thought, well, you know, if I'm strong in an area for God, there's no way that I'm going to be tested in that strength because right. I'm strong. You know, the enemy, we've always kind of had this idea that the enemy kind of wants to, you know, um, point out our, our soft spots. But I, I have found personally and in the lives of others, and, and you can testify to this, that where you thought, well, this is my this is my strength. This is what I live for. This is what I'm known for. Right. There is no way that I'll be challenged um, in this area. And and lo and behold, that is exactly the area. It's almost like uh, the enemy, and not only enemy, people, society in general, are saying, oh, is, is that what you believe? Is that what you stand for? Let's just see how real, you know, this thing really is. Yeah. And, and I agree with you, Pastor. You know, um, even in this time where, you know, we're seeing like even with purity and um, and that stuff is being attacked, there's people that stand out in this generation, for example, with certain things that are just different, things that people need. And we see the very people, you know, who, who are called to rise up in this generation being attacked in those things. And we wonder, well, if this is their strength, why? Why do you think the devil is wanting to attack people in their places of strength? What's the purpose of that? Yeah, you know, I think it's, you know, for the enemy, it's a prize. Like, like, and, and by the way, we're not even talking about unsaved people. Sometimes we're talking about in the church circle, you right. know, when, you know, whether you mentioned the, uh, the subject of, of purity, like, for example, amongst young people, right. you would think that the young people that are trying to live for Christ, which, by the way, is very difficult, would be celebrated. But the opposite is true. That they is are, so true. They are criticized. They are ridiculed. Uh, they're made to feel like they're freaks and they're strange versus saying, hey, what are you doing? Uh, how can we be like you? It's it's this idea of, you know, you can't break out of the status quo. Uh, you can't be different than the rest of us. Therefore, uh, we are going to drag you through the mud somehow. We'll, right. we'll lie about you, spread rumors about you. Uh, and of course... In those scenarios, Candace, you know, the individual is left helpless because they can't defend themselves. Sometimes they're not even uh, in those circles and in those chats. And it's just so, uh, it's discouraging. It is really, you know, my heart goes out. I have felt it personally. My heart goes out to people that are trying to live godly. Why are these fiery trials? These, uh, you know, in, in the book of Ephesians, Paul calls it fiery darts, right? right. Notice that word, fiery darts, poisonous darts that keep coming at you, and you would think, hey, if I'm living wrong, I understand you're criticizing, but I'm trying to live for God, and still you're, you know, I'm being right. attacked. That's the part that almost seems counterintuitive. Right. But you know what it should say to us, Candace, that, hey, there's something that is genuine and legit that is there. Right. Right. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Well, well, you know, like when you're saying that there about the poison, you know, um, the devil, the Bible says the devil, he's looking around, seeking who he can destroy, like a roaring lion, you know, and 
um, when you think like what the devil tries to bring unbelief. So my thinking as well as what you're saying about this poison, when you're attacked at the place of your strength, what's happened is you begin to question your identity. You begin to not believe in yourself. So it's unbelief. It's a subtle way. It's taking unbelief as we know it, unbelief in, in God and his faith, but taking unbelief in a subtle twist, which we know the enemy always come in, comes in with that subtlety to attack the identity of the things that God has called us to. So I believe what he tries to do is to attack our identity and he tries to isolate us. And now we begin to doubt, oh, but I, I've been through this with God. Um, God has strengthened me in this era. This is a strength. And he begins to attack who we are. That unbelief starts to come in and it really, he starts to work on our mind. Because now we have to put up a front. We, st we start to question, who am I really? Does God, has God really anointed me? Has God really given me the strength? Am I me to stand out in this generation? And there, be very careful, is where the devil starts to attack. And once he gets your mind, you start to now retreat from the things that you're called to. And now there, that's how the person ends up. You know? I think, you know what, I think that's an amazing statement you make. You know, as you were speaking, I was thinking about Daniel. You know, Daniel, the Bible says he prayed three times a day. He was right. a, he would open his windows. He was a God worshiper. Right. And, and what is he, what is he attacked on? The very thing that, hey, you're going to bow down to this idol. You're going to bow down to this other God. Right. You would think that they would have tried to catch him in his business dealings or, or something like that. But because they couldn't catch him even in those things. Right. All of a sudden, Candace, it was what? His his identity as as a, a Hebrew, right. uh, his identity as, as one that prayed and worshipped Jehovah, the only God. And so, you know, we really want to encourage people today that don't be dismayed. Don't don't think it's a surprise. That's right. what Peter says. Don't, right. don't be shocked that yes. you're going to have these temptations. Don't be shocked that fiery trials are coming, persecution. What do we mean by that? People lying about you, gossiping about right. you, making up stories right. uh, about you in the very area of strength. You know, Candice, I, you know, I, I, I was thinking, you know, I and you know, I'm one of the most empowering uh, pastors of 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 women. Not not so much women, but Christ that's in you know yes, women. Yes, that's right. That's true. And and yet, boom, I get I get attacked in that. I'm I'm one of the most collaborative leaders, uh, and then I get I get criticized that I'm the the opposite. I'm. I'm like, I, I've been really perplexed myself that I thought I'll never be challenged. Even in our church, you know, our church is very multicultural. Right. Our, our leadership is very, uh, very multicultural. I, I, even when the whole Black Lives Matter thing started, I thought, oh, I have strength in this area. There's no way that anybody would challenge me. And boom, it came up. And right. it was, it, it honestly was puzzling. But I think what you're saying is correct, that it has to do with our identity. Right. It has to do with our call and our assignment. And I think the, you know, what makes gold, gold, it, it's that fiery process that right. it goes through. Right, right. And so in the midst of this, Pastor, I guess the question is now, how do you rally from that? What do we need to know? So I'm being tested. I'm being attacked in this area. Usually I can say, well, this is my weakness. I'm working on it. So what happens now? Um, you know, what would you say to people? You're being attacked in your strength. What do, what's the conversation that is happening between you and God in this time? What's the journey and the process that you're going through to make sure that, you know, and, and even in the area I was thinking of, of gifts, you know, if you base your identity, um, not just on your strength, but on your gifts, right? Um, what can happen is that um, if that gift is attacked, and let's say you don't have a season where you're not operating in that gift anymore, all of a sudden now you've lost who you are. So what would you say to people to rally now? Your, your strength has been attacked. How do I rally? What's my process now? What do I believe? Where do I go? What does my conversation look like yeah. with God? Well, I think first of all, our identity has to come from the fact that we are sons and daughters of Christ, of God, right? Like that, we're the children of God before gifts, anointings, callings, and everything. Right. I think the second thing is, be prepared. You are going in this season. You are going to be uh, challenged, attacked in um, in those strengths, right. and, and so uh, don't let it be a shock to you. Uh, I would say prepare, get ready. If right. you are strong in an area, you're going to be uh, you're going to be tested. You're going to find out is this really um, genuine? Is it the real thing? Because the enemy, for the enemy, uh, that is a prize, and so. Don't don't let your guard down. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, don't don't think that you're going to avoid it because you're not. You're going to go through it. Uh, by the way, even in the wilderness, Luke chapter four, Candace, yes. uh, Jesus was tested in his strengths. That's you know, right. it, and you you talk about That's identity, right. right? Yes. If you are the son of God, That's exactly you know, if right. you are, then you know do these things. You know, turn stone into bread and throw yourself off the pinnacle, and and all those areas, Candace, were his strength. Right. Right. And and what did he do? He rallied by knowing who he was, and he rallied by the word of God and by throwing it. Because remember, you, you talked about the twist, right? How right. the enemy twisted. Right. He twisted the word. But the Lord Jesus was able to say, no, here's what the word of God says. Let me quote it to you correctly and right. accurately. Right. This is who I am. This is what I have come to do, and what I've come to accomplish. And then the Bible says he left him. And the outcome of that was that Jesus came out of the wilderness, right? right? Fiery trials, right. temptations, um, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. I don't know that, if you want to add to that. Yeah, so, um, no, I, I completely agree with that, you know, and it comes to mind when you were talking about that, what, what Jesus said. He said, you know, um, people were always um, saying things about him, against him, and, and it said that Jesus never minded what other people said because he knew what was in the heart of men. And I think we need to recognize that. And our prayer for you is that you would not just listen to what comes from men who are being used by the enemy. You would constantly listen to what comes from God. Listen to his voice. In a time like it is now, we need to be so saturated in the word of God. Let the word be your guide. You know, the spirit of God and the word search the truth for what God says about you and what he says about others. And let that be your guide by the Holy Spirit. The time that we're living in now, Pastor, are tough. Yeah. You know, and we need to really, and the devil is going to come. He's pulling out everything that he can. And at a time when he said, oh, it's good enough to attack you in, in your weaknesses, now strategy has changed, where deception now has become the thing. And deception is cloaked where? It's cloaked in some bit of truth. That's why your identity is coming to be attacked, you know? So, you know, um, as we close off, and this, this has been really, really good, and we pray that people would just listen and understand, you know, the times that we're living in, you know, and that God would preserve you. What are your final thoughts? Pastor. You know, as Candace, as you were speaking there, I, here's what I would say that, you know, Jesus was in the wilderness by himself. And there are times we're going to walk by ourselves with God. So we need to be uh, in the spirit, in prayer, in the word. Right. But then there are, you know, other seasons where we need to surround ourselves with people that are like-minded, mm -hmm. have like strengths. That, right. And what I mean by that is uh, they have our standards and our convictions and our core values. And right. so, you know, you mentioned the subject of purity. Well, if uh, you know if you're going to be pure, then you're going to probably have to be surrounded by people that value that, versus the people that don't value that. Right. Because if you're going to be around the wrong crowd, they're just going to continually like chickens. You know, they're just going to continually peck away until they what they, they wear you down. Isn't that what the enemy wants to do, Candace? Yes. Either intimidate us or wear us down to where we kind of say and and, and I you know this isn't worth it. Uh, it's, there's too much energy, there's too much, you know, there's too much of a battle. Right. But when you're surrounded with people that have your core convictions, then, you know, you can strengthen one another. I think that's incredibly important because the enemy loves to isolate us right. Right. and make us feel like, well, you're the only one, you're you're the freak, you're so rare. And the truth is, they're few and far between, but right. we're we're not the only ones, right? right? We're right. not, we're never the only ones. And, right. and so you just have to find those people. And and Candice, can I say this? Sometimes we need to uh, politely ask some people to leave our lives. Right. And I know that's not a popular message, but right. if you're going to erode at my values, then, then maybe you don't belong there. Right, right. What you surround yourself with and who you surround yourself with is what you become. So, you know, I love what you're saying, Pastor. Prayer, be in the Word, but also surround yourself with like-minded people and that godly counsel. Well, it's been really, I love these talks because it's real things that happen in real times. And we've just had um, just a, a good time today just being with you on What Was That About? And we look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>